Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Civil asset forfeiture, a topic I talk about quite often, is one of the two topics to get people fired up the most on this channel. Of course, the other being qualified immunity. I did a video on that a couple days ago, but uh, a story involving civil asset forfeiture has popped up in the news recently down south. And uh, Jonathan sent me the story. And, you know, there's so many of these stories. I'm always torn as to which ones I should do. I'm not going to sit here and do nothing but civil asset forfeiture stories day in and day out because it kind of loses its impact that way. But once in a while, I got to talk about this because each one is, is crazier than the last, it seems. And again, civil asset forfeiture is the notion that if you come into contact with law enforcement and you've got money or something of value, they can take it from you and say, we think this is the proceeds or fruits of a crime. And if you want it back, you can sue us. Otherwise, just let us keep it. And they often do this to people traveling with cash. And the most common question I get is, people ask me, I say, Steve, you know, you're a lawyer. You talk about this enough. If I'm traveling with cash uh, and I'm going to get it taken from me through civil asset forfeiture, what could I do to avoid that? And the answer is, I don't know. There might not be much you can do. Now, there's things you could do that depend on the circumstances. So for instance, if you have a bank that has branches around the country, you might be able to go to where you're going, determine you want to make the purchase and have the person come to your bank branch. But that's not going to work on a Sunday. Uh, it's not going to work if you bank at a smaller a credit union or something. And so there, there might not be much you can do. What needs to be done is civil asset forfeiture needs to go away. They need to actually end this practice because this is the government stealing from people. And this is one of those things where I, I still get pushback. People go, Steve, this can't be happening. You must be describing this wrong. You must be exaggerating. You must, you must hate cops. <laughs> From Fox 46 out of Charlotte, exclusive. Charlotte Trucking Company owner fights to get $40,000 seized at airport back. And this is uh, a little stranger even than that. The man's name is Jerry Johnson. He did what is legal to do last summer. He hopped on a flight at Charlotte Douglas International and took cash with him. Okay, so he gets on the plane, he's got cash. So the owner of a Charlotte Trucking Company says nearly $40,000 in cash was seized from him at the airport, even though he did nothing wrong and wasn't charged with a crime. He said, I definitely don't think it's fair. It's very upsetting that people can just steal your money. So he flew from Charlotte to Phoenix in August. His plan was to buy a tractor trailer for his small company. Uh, he was uh, going through some ads, and he found an auto auction out there. So he thought, oh, I'm going to go out there and buy myself a truck. He said, they're very competitive. Thousands of people go. It's basically you bring your cash and you put a deposit down. And there are places like that, auctions and so on, where they say that unless you're some kind of qualified buyer with us or whatever, you better have cash. Don't bid unless you've got cash. As you can imagine, if you jack the bidding up and go, oh, I haven't got the money, <laughs> felt like bidding. So Johnson uh, made a lot of money uh, with his business transporting vital stuff around during the pandemic. He has two employees and he wants to expand his operation. He got to Phoenix. So he actually got on the plane to Charlotte, fine. And he got to Phoenix and an undercover officer approached him in baggage claim and asked him if he had any money or drugs on him. Now, if a totally unmarked person <laughs> walks up to me and says, do you have any drugs or money? I'd be tempted to call the cops, go, hey, this guy's, this guy's trying to get drugs. Everybody, this guy's a criminal. Turns out it was a cop. Hey, you got any drugs or money on you? Got any drugs or money? So he was then interrogated. And then they presented him with a piece of paper and said, sign this or you're under arrest. Uh, he said they were going to take my money because it was part of a money laundering operation. So they discovered that he had the $40,000 in cash on him. He's traveling. Uh, he got off the plane. He made it where he's going. So we've heard stories of people who go through TSA and they get pulled out because they got money in their carry-on, for instance, and then they get turned over to local law enforcement who then takes the money. So what appears to have happened here, if I'm guessing on this, I'll admit it, but I think I'm right, is that somebody saw the money go through TSA and they're like, well, I don't know. And they just called ahead and said, hey, you know, we didn't grab it, but if you want it, you can have it. So the guy gets off the plane. An undercover officer is waiting for him because he's traveling with cash, which, by the way, is perfectly legal. Uh, you may know that if you leave the country or are crossing the border with cash, you're required to report it. I believe it's over $10,000. And I've 
crossed the border before, and if you're coming in through like an international airport, they'll actually give you a form on the airplane and say, fill this form out. And it says, you know, where are you coming from? Where are you a citizen of? One of the questions, are you, you know, are you bringing in cash? And it's something they do to track it so they can tax it if necessary. So this guy's traveling domestically. He didn't cross any international borders. You are absolutely within your rights legally to travel with cash inside the United States. The problem is that you do that, you make yourself a target for the pirates. I mean, I mean the police who will seize your money. So um, he was asked by a reporter, did they have any evidence that you were doing money laundering? Did they tell you what their basis of this claim was? And the man says he did not present any to me. So they then took $39,500 from him, but they let him keep 500 bucks, even though he was never charged with a crime. The report filled out by the officer says that the money was borrowed from people and stated the money did not belong to him, referring to Johnson. So when asked, is this money yours? They say he told them, no, it's not. But um, again, he's going to buy a, a vehicle for his company. Um, the point is, according to him, they handed him a piece of paper and said, sign this or you're under arrest. And the question is, if the man's money laundering and the $40,000 is money laundering, why do you let him keep 500 bucks of it? I mean, that, that, that does not make any sense. If, if all the money is tainted, you take all of it. If none of it's tainted, you leave all of it. So the fact that they take some of it and leave some of it implies that they know that what they're doing is wrong. Uh, Paul Avalar, a managing attorney with a nonprofit law firm Institute for Justice, is helping Johnson try to get his money back and said, unfortunately, what happened to Jerry is common nationally. It is not illegal to carry cash. Avalar says if authorities suspected Johnson of committing a crime, they should have taken him to court. Oh, this, you know, what a complex idea. If the government suspects that Jerry was involved in money laundering, they can seize his money as evidence and maybe they can even seize it for future forfeiture. But then they actually have to show that he's involved in a crime. There's only one way to do that in this country, and that's through a criminal trial and a criminal conviction. And, of course, none of that has happened here. So what the government will do is they'll take the money, never charge you with a crime, and you say, I want my money back. And they say, oh, sue us. But when you sue them to get your money back, the burden of proof is on you. You've got to prove that you were not involved in a crime, which is backwards from how most people think of the burden of proof when it goes being accused of something. We have what's called a legal fiction, and they say, oh, we're not accusing you of anything. We're accusing the money. We think the money is guilty. Uh, Johnson did previously serve time in prison for drugs and intent to distribute, and he's also arrested for marijuana possession in 2012. He says he's turned his life around and in 2015 opened his trucking company. So I know there's going to be people who are skeptical. I say, oh, wait a second, Steve. Now we know what's going on here. The guy's a drug dealer. No, no, he wasn't charged with anything involving anything to do with any of this. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if after the guy got in the plane, they ran his information. That, oh, my gosh, we could have grabbed his stuff and just said he's a drug dealer. I mean, we, we could have, right? I mean, he's, he's, he's got the rap sheet for it. Now, again, the last arrest was nine years ago, and he started his trucking company six years ago. And I've been around on this earth for a couple of years, and in my travels, Throughout my life, I've met people who've turned their lives around. I've met a lot of people who've turned their lives around. And so you encounter somebody who owns a company and they're working real hard and they appreciate life and you get to talking to them and they go, yeah, a while back I had some trouble. Woke up one morning in a jail cell and thought if I ever get out of here, I'm going to do it right. I'm going to straighten my life out. It does happen. And so people like that should be rewarded for what they've done, not punished for it. So Phoenix police did not respond to a request for comment. Johnson's money has not been returned and he's not been charged with a crime. Now, TV stations and the media have been reporting on civil asset forfeiture cases for years, and it's quite common that passengers have money seized at airports, um, especially by the DEA. They view traveling with large sums of money to be suspicious. So because it's suspicious, they take it and force you to sue them to get your stuff back. The Institute for Justice has filed a class action lawsuit against both the TSA and the DEA. They want to stop the practice, and they call it unconstitutional. And that is the most common comment I get to these videos. People say, Steve, 
Isn't this unconstitutional? Well, it, it is to the average person. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court has ruled it's not. So our U.S. Supreme Court has said that civil asset forfeiture is not unconstitutional so long as you let the person whose money you took sue to get it back. And if you give them their day in court, and that's that. The problem, of course, is that suing to get your money back when you're fighting somebody with unlimited resources, i.e. our government, they will make the process as expensive as possible so that let's suppose they stole $10,000 from you. I mean, seized $10,000 from you. You want your money back. You go to an attorney and say, I want to sue the U.S. government for $10,000. The attorney's going to go, we can't do that. You go, why not? He goes, it's going to cost more than $10,000. And it would. And they know that. So they're hoping that the guy with the $40,000 won't fight because, well, he'll have to pay an attorney $10,000, $20,000. But the good news is that the Institute for Justice has stepped in and they're handling this. So how much you want to bet they're going to roll over and pay? Because they're going to be like, oh, now the guy's actually got a fighting chance of winning. And they'll often call up people like this and say, hey, look, we can go to court for another year or two, fight over this. We'll give you 20 grand back today. You want 20 grand today or the chance of 40 grand a year from now? What do you want to do? And some people will take that. They need the money. So it's, it's crazy that our government does this to us. A judge has now ruled this case can move forward in federal court, despite the fact that the TSA and the DEA both filed motions to have the case dismissed. They actually brought motions and said, no, don't even let the guy come to court. Uh, the, the money was seized properly, and he shouldn't be allowed to fight that. The TSA will not respond to requests seeking comment. And the DEA said the Drug Enforcement Administration does not have a comment at this time because the case is still being litigated. Uh, Fox 46, that's a TV station reporting this originally out of Charlotte, asked if the DEA could comment generally about the practice of seizing money and if cash can be taken without probable cause of a crime. The DEA insisted it could not comment due to ongoing litigation. Money seized goes into a federal forfeiture fund, which can be used for any law enforcement purpose, including daiquiri makers, up-armored Humvees, uh, Super Bowl rings, uh, popcorn makers, and all of this stuff's widely documented. And if you think I'm making this up, search civil asset forfeiture daiquiri maker, and you'll find out all about it. Uh, the attorney at the Institute for Justice, the senior attorney, says, we're trying to shut this down because the government should not be treating travelers like ATMs. And that's <laughs> not that far off because... Anytime you incentivize someone to act badly, that is, if you act badly, you'll be rewarded, uh, that should be something our society should frown upon. And right now, the police, if they seize your money and they keep it, which they're going to do 99% of the time, uh, they have to split it with the feds quite often or with somebody else. But they're often told you get to keep a portion of it and do whatever you want with it, as long as you can kind of make it look like it's police related. So you'll find these little police departments out in the middle of nowhere that have a road traveling nearby and they uh, civil asset forfeiture the heck out of people as they pass by. And they use that money to buy all kinds of stuff that they really don't need, but hey, they got some money laying around, why not spend it? And you get this where they actually got all kinds of cool vehicles and the you know they got all kinds of neat stuff in the, in the police station. Daiquiri makers is one that seems to be popular. Uh, and you go, wait, a daiquiri maker for a police station? Sure, why not? <laughs> Uh, Super Bowl rings, tickets, Super Bowl jackets, that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it, it's better if the Super Bowl is in your town if you do that, but hey, that, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, as they say. So it's a crazy story. But this one in particular is sad because the guy is trying to you know, build up his company, a uh, hardworking guy, and he's traveling domestically with $40,000. And his mistake was he assumed that as a law-abiding citizen, that he could actually just go about his business. And the police don't see it that way. So Charlotte Trucking Company owner fights to get $40,000 back, seized at airport. And Fox 46 published it. Jonathan sent me. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. There's a great power in words. If you don't hitch too many of them together,